Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Alertus webinar series. My name is Liz Reese, Digital Marketing Specialist at Alertus Technologies. During this presentation, Miles Herringer, Director of Higher Education Sales, and Saif Ibrahim, Sales Engineer, will share insight on unified facility notification and how our products work together to provide complete notification coverage in an emergency. You will also learn more about our flagship product, the wall-mounted alert beacon, which is designed to serve campuses, military bases, and other large facilities that presently lack an in-building emergency notification system. And we're retrofitting a conventional voice public address system is impractical and cost prohibitive. Please hold your questions until the end of the webinar, but feel free to type your questions in the question box or chat box in the meantime, and we will address them during the Q&A session at the end of the presentation. This webinar is being recorded and will be shared with you after today's session. If you have any questions after this presentation, please email marketing at alertus.com. Now I'd like to turn it over to today's presenters. Thanks, Liz. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining. I know you guys are busy today, so thanks for taking the time out of your busy day to uh, listen to our webinar. Um, just for our overview, I'd like to do a uh, quick uh, overview about Alertus and how the company got started, walk you through some emergency notification challenges. So we've done many demonstrations and uh, we come across a lot of common challenges. So just see which ones apply to you. We want to discuss our Alertus solution. So we'll go through a few of our solutions, discuss the uh, mandates and codes, make sure you're up to date. And the heavy focus of our uh, today's webinar will be the topic of our Alert Beacon, which is the product uh, that our company was founded on and uh, we'll do a live activation for you and you know if you have any questions like Liz mentioned uh, please submit them in the chat or question box and if we have enough time we'd uh, sure like to get around and get them answered for you so let's get started so a quick background about Alertus we were founded in the year of uh, 2002 I'm not sure if uh, some of you remember this but a uh, tornado hit uh, the campus of uh, the University of Maryland. Uh, for whatever reason, those students didn't receive the uh, text or, or email in time. And um, essentially what uh, the founders of Alertus, they were students at the university during this tragedy, and they decided to develop uh, a facility-based type of notification system, a solution that's focused on alerting spaces and areas in a timely manner. So, you don't have to be enrolled in any type of list or wait an extended amount of time for an alert. And we were founded on our product called the Alert Beacon, but it turned into all these different solutions that we're able to offer today. So for our solution, it's you know indoor and outdoor facility-based notification, but we certainly specialize in a lot of other uh, solutions. And the sectors we serve in are uh, many of uh, corporate, higher education, um, healthcare, local government, K through 12, military, you name it. Um, so, you know, if you're interested in the Alertus solutions, and certainly if you'd like some references, certainly get connected with us, and we'll get you in touch with the right people. So, um, how do you issue uh, an emergency notification? So, you know, for each each person here that we have, um, I'm sure that if I would ask you that question, um, everyone would probably respond a bit differently. But most of the standard ways um, would be as follows. Um, SMS text messaging, email, social media, VoIP phone notification, PA systems with a live or uh, recorded message. And there's certainly uh, many more different ways, but those are some of the most common or standard ways that we come across. So as we sit at this slide, I'd, I'd like for you to take a minute and think, you know, how do you activate your systems, um, you know, how, what systems do you log into and, and how many uh, different steps uh, does it take to activate that system? So if you're listening in today and you have more than one step, um, that's too many. Um, and so think about the last time that, you know, your organization tested your system. Uh, did it take one minute, five minutes? Um, we're doing a lot of presentations here at Alertus and we're, we're typically finding it takes about 30 minutes to coordinate an emergency notification from start to finish to activate the full system. And, you know, certainly when seconds count, um, it's unacceptable. So, you know, even if you have, um, you know, just one step, 
um, think about how you want to expand your system and, and typically that would involve an additional step as well. So um, just take that into consideration. How long does it take to activate uh, your full system? So as far as you know, what is mass notification, emergency mass notification, this is certainly important to understand the differences between unified facility and personal notification. So with emergency mass notification, it's you know, methods that facilitate the one-way dissemination or broadcast of messages to one or more groups of people, notifying or alerting a group of individuals of a pending or existing you know, emergency situation. So you know, essentially what that's saying is, is it's notifying of an emergency situation through any form of communication. And there's two forms of communication, and it's important to understand the differences between the two. There's unified facility notification, and there's personal notification. So with unified facility notification, it's a, a comprehensive emergency alerting solution that notifies individuals across facilities using a variety of methods and notification modalities. So essentially what that's saying is when you hear, you know, the unified facility-based notification, think of facility notification, notifying a space or area indoors or outdoors. So for outdoors, um, an example could be outdoor speaker systems. For indoors, an example could be our product like the alert beacons, um, overriding computers, overriding cable TV, overriding digital signage, um, integration with your VoIP phones, integration with your fire panel speakers, and, and many other solutions. So that's facility-based notification. The personal notification is your SMS provider that does the phone, text, or email to notify individuals in the event of an emergency. So, you know, using SMS to send emails and text and phone calls. So, it's very important to understand the difference between unified facility notification and personal notification. And it's very important and very essential to have both layers to cover your facility and your organization with emergency notification. So now, as far as the challenges goes, um, you know, below are a list of the most common challenges that we come across. And, you know, discussing the multiple points of activation, that's certainly a common challenge. But here are also some other challenges that we come across, and you know, it's certainly important to touch on these and see which ones apply to you. So think of your, your organization and your layout. You know, do you have any specific locations indoors or outdoors where there's no way to notify people? Um, think about your buildings, you know, do you have any buildings that aren't staffed 24-7, which certainly is an issue for emergency alerts? Do you have any special needs individuals at your organization? Uh, if you do, you need ADA compliance where you need to get a uh, spoken message uh, or a uh, visual message uh, to those uh, individuals with that emergency alert. Do you have any loud environments? So it's difficult to get specific noises and alerts to specific locations because of the noise levels. You know, cell phones not allowed. Um, if you're a college, are professors starting off classes by saying, turn off your cell phones before you get started? Um, if you're with your organization, do you have specific locations or areas where cell phones aren't allowed or you know, like me sitting on this webinar today, turning off my cell phone before we get started today, does that apply to you at all? And then also, um, you know, visitors and contractors, you know, think about your organization and, and the people that are at your uh, facility on a daily and you know, weekly basis. You know, how do they receive alerts? Are they enrolled in any type of system? And if something would happen, how would they get you know notified? So, you know, these are the common challenges that we're coming across and. You know, for some of you sitting on the call today, it, all these could be challenges or maybe just a few, and we'll go through how we can address and, and help you with these challenges. So uh, leveraging emergency notification components. So think about your current infrastructure and, you know, how you can leverage emergency notification components. So for, you know, audible notification, um, the audible notification is to ensure the target audience can hear and understand the alert. And so for audible notification, think of the different ways of 
hearing an alert, you know, through our alert beacons or through indoor or outdoor speakers or, you know, through your fire panel speakers, VoIP phones, or even your computer speakers. And then think about visible notification. So ensuring that your target audience can see the alert. So think about all the different ways you can visually read an alert through text, email, social media posts, computers, digital signage override, cable TV override, alert beacons, LED marquees, VoIP phones, and a mobile app. And so, you know, what we like to focus on obviously is leveraging the infrastructure and making sure that there's both the audible and visible notification. And as far as the education and engagement goes, it's important to ensure the target audience understands, receives, and acknowledges, you know, these alerts. You know, one thing that I say on, on every call is, you know, you, you, you look at your organization and you think about the incidents that have happened over the past years, and you look at the incidents that were handled extremely well, it's because there was a lot of training involved. And, you know, you could have the best system in the world, but if you aren't training your people, a system like this just won't be of, uh, as effective. So, you know, education and engagement is, is certainly uh, highly and, and very important. So for the alertist solution, so um, now that you have a good understanding of your system, you have a good understanding of your steps and your challenges, and even now your current infrastructure of what we could potentially leverage, let's, let's discuss the alertist solution and how we can help. So one of the, the main focuses is a single point of activation. So, you know, think about all the different solutions that you have the potential to integrate with. That's our focus, and that's going to be your most cost-effective approach, is integrating with your current systems that you have at your organization. Um, even with integrating with all those different notification assets, there's still going to be probably some areas that are being missed um, indoors and outdoors. And what Alertus can do is provide you with that hardware, uh, both outdoors and both indoors, like our alert beacons, to get that message out to those locations. As far as the codes and mandates goes, let's do a quick walkthrough of those different codes. So for the, the uh, NFPA, the National Fire Protection Association, the NFPA uh, covers uh, the application, the installation, the location, the testing, the performance, the maintenance and reporting um, for those fire panel systems. So in other words, it's giving you the requirements for anything that is going to be announced for any emergencies that are in your environment. Uh, for the ADA compliance, the Americans with the Disabilities Act, the ADA is the focus of being compliant to have both the audible and the visual messaging for emergency alerts. For the unified facilities criteria, the, the objective of the UFC program is to streamline the military criteria system by eliminating duplication of information and increasing the reliance on private sector standards. So it's creating a more of an efficient criteria development and publishing process. So in short, since 2004, mass notification has been required in all new DOD construction as well as in leased buildings, additions, expedientary, and temporary DOD structures. And the final is the Clery Act, and you know, this is mainly for higher education, for you know, colleges and universities to report and disclose all crime at or near the prospective campuses. So discussing you know, NFPA 72, so think about um, the handbook, and if you've ever gone through the handbook, I would highly recommend to uh, review Chapter t uh, 24, because Alertus and our Alert Beacon is in uh, the handbook. Um, and what it says is where audible notification is provided, mass notification systems shall also provide visible information to serve the hearing impaired and for high noise areas. So the solution offers greater intelligibility than conventional public address systems and is practical for you know, retrofitting older facilities when it's reliable uh, wireless systems and options. So, I mean, essentially, this alert beacon has the ability to uh, tie into your fire panel systems, which we'll dive into uh, in a little bit here. So, for our solution overview, this gives you a 
high-level overview of, of everything that we have to offer um, here at Alertus. And, you know, like I've touched on a, a few times already, our, our focus is, is leveraging your current infrastructure. So, you know, take a look at the different solutions that we have here and, you know, which solutions do you currently have, you know, at your campus? And, you know, once you identify those solutions, Alertus can give you the ability to tie into those systems. And, you know, for any other areas that are being missed for emergency notification, you know, that's really where our alert beacon can come in hand to fill in those gaps, you know, indoors or outdoors with those emergency alerts. And additionally, the alert beacon is the device that ties a lot of these different hardware solutions to your main console as a one point of activation for emergency notification as well. So just to be clear, if you're currently using the Alertus interface or you're, 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 alert, you're using or leveraging a different solution, our focus is, is taking these different endpoints and tying them to your existing system as a one point of activation for emergency notification. So no matter who you have as far as a, a provider goes, you have checkboxes and our, our focus is, is building more checkboxes in your current interface and our alert beacon is certainly one of our main products to integrate those different systems. So the alert beacon, um, the alert beacon, this is, again was the, comp the, the product that our company was founded on. Um, it was designed to serve at you know, campuses and military bases and other large facilities that you know, lack the indoor notification. Uh, they're wall mounted um, in any spaces or areas that are being missed. You know, a good example is, you know, as we talked about those challenges, any areas indoors, and a great example could be, for example, you could wall mount them in areas where you have dead zones. Um, you wall mount those beacons and they'll be able to receive those messages in those areas. And how the beacons are activated is it's through a flash and a sound to capture their attention of anyone in that, you know, specific location. And that same message that you're sending out through the Alertus or your current interface is the same unified message that will be displayed on the alert beacon screen. And so we have the yellow and, and white faceplate options. Um, for the white, you know, some organizations like their uh, emergency notification solutions to blend in. Others like the yellow faceplate because it stands for emergency notification. They like to, for it to stick out. Uh, but we can certainly work with you uh, on what beacon would be the best fit. Some of the key features. Um, the alert beacon is a reliable product. So it has an immediate response. Um, it's not dependent upon the congested and cell, pho uh, cell phone towers um, or even the internet, um, which is certainly a fantastic thing with reliable and redundant uh, emergency notification solutions. It's uh, affordable. Um, it's approximately one ninth of the cost of your PA systems with no reoccurring fees. So, you know, once you purchase this alert beacon, it's yours and there's no reoccurring fee for the alert beacon side. Um, it's interoperable, so uh, the unified activation with most other mass uh, notification solutions, um, it does the integration with CAP and, and API. So Alertus, we work with you know, a lot of SMS vendors um, where they have their interface and they need a way of activating um, the alert beacon through that current interface and Alertus has developed the API and the CAP protocols to integrate with those solutions and those systems. As far as the integration, which you know we'll discuss uh, further on with these slides, it's designed to integrate with external devices, so your LED marquees, um, panic buttons, and you know any of those, you know fire panel, PA, or you know even the VoIP systems that you have. Um, this beacon is the device that's going to tie those systems together as a one point of activation for emergency notification. And, you know, with all of our products, like the Alert Beacon, um, these can be uh, localized information when and where it's needed. So you can zone, uh, essentially zone these uh, beacons and these devices uh, for alerts. So if you want an alert to go to a specific uh, building or a specific campus or a specific location, you have the ca capability of grouping these products and locating an alert and sending an alert just to that specific area. So the Alert Beacon specs. Um, you know, let's go through a couple of the, the main features of this, this product. Um, it's about seven by six to give you an idea of the size. Um, you have eight different LED strobes and patterns. And additionally, you have multicolor options uh, with the green 
and with the red alerts. So you have your red for your emergency and your green for your all clear. The sounders have eight different tones, so you can customize these tones for specific alerts. And it also goes up to 106 decibels as a max. Um, there's many different tiers and levels that you can uh, have the alert beacon to. Um, you could have it all the way to 106, and you could even have the alert beacon go off silent. So it's just a flashing light and a display of the message um, for specific situations that you have. For the communication path, the, as far as how the alert beacon is receiving the message, it's receiving through uh, the power over Ethernet is probably one of the most common, but we also uh, can work with other networks depending upon your setup. Another way would be through an FM radio subcarrier, the uh, RBDS. We also have a Wi-Fi alert beacon option. Now with the Wi-Fi, um, it'll have an AC-DC plugin. And typically with the Wi-Fi beacons, you'd want to do uh, backup batteries uh, in case of any power uh, failures. And then finally, you have uh, even paging as an option. So there's a lot of different communication paths, and we can really set this up uh, around you know, your network and, and your setup for your organization. As far as the security goes, it's, a a a a a excuse me, it's AES encryption. So it's proprietary secure protocol between the server and the alert beacons. Um, these beacons are, you know, in the military and government and a lot of very uh, high security sectors, so it shouldn't be a problem for your organization. The LCD viewing distance is around 10 to 15 feet. Um, as far as the 106 decibel level, um, that should reach to around about 100. So as far as, you know, the visual message and, and actually hearing the alert, you got a lot of coverage with these beacons. Um, so, you know, the sound can certainly make you look at your phone for an emergency and the LCD screen is, is pretty visual for walking up and understanding what the emergency uh, is. And then finally, as far as the power goes, low voltage, 12 to 24 AC or DC, again, for those uh, Wi-Fi beacons. And then you have the, the PoE, um, which would supply both the uh, power uh, and the signal for the PoE. So um, you have a lot of different options depending upon what beacon would be the best setup for you. Now, as far as the extended capabilities goes, um, you know, I think it's important to show you the, the front and back of these because that gives you the ability of you know, how these beacons tie into your, you know, your other systems. So you have the, the different high-intensity strobes, and you have eight different tone sounders, so a lot of different options as you want to customize. Um, the large uh, blacklit LCD is great, you know, if you in a dark area, or even if it's a lit area, the LCD makes it very easy to read, um, as you can see with that picture. The secure wall mount bracket, um, very important. We, we have lots of different wall, wall mount brackets because you know, all these different organizations that we work with, um, they work with new buildings. They work with buildings from the 1800s, and you know the, the buildings with how the infrastructure is are all a bit different, and we have lots of different brackets to support wherever you need to install these beacons and you know when you if you have interest in the beacons after this web demonstration we can get with you to you know build a design around your infrastructure and your areas that would make the most sense for you to put these uh, devices. Um, I touched on that they're zonable and um, they're also reliable wireless technology like we said with the Wi-Fi options and with the backs as well it's it's good to get an understanding of the different plugs and the different solutions that have in the back of this alert beacon to give you an idea of all the different ways that the system would, would tie to. So you have the unit ID, you have the serial number, um, the power switch, the reset button. Of course, you have the, the battery backup, uh, the DC input, the aux connector with eight. If you can see there, that's where the dip switches are. And then you have the FM, RBDS antennas for nine. Um, 10 is your PoE, 11 is a serial port, and, and 12 is the expansion. And so, you know, as you can see from the back of these alert beacons, these extended capabilities are what give you the option to tie into, you know, the other systems that you want to integrate with. You know, the alert beacon gives you the ability to connect with your access control system through a dry contact closure for lockdown scenarios. 
Uh, the beacon gives you the ability to connect with your fire panel speakers to, to leverage them for emergency alerts and spoken messages. Um, it gives you the ability to you know, tie into your existing PA, public address systems, uh, whether it's indoors or outdoors uh, or both. And this also gives you the ability to tie into a lot of other solutions like our hardwired panic button setup. So, you know, let's say you want to put a blue button in dispatch that says lockdown and you want to press that button. That blue lockdown button ties to the alert beacon and that's what's going to activate everything that you have with your organization uh, within seconds. And then additionally, it ties to a lot of other solutions, you know, like our LED marquees and so on. And, you know, after this call, if you have specific questions about your systems at your organizations, reach out to us and we'd love to discuss in further detail on how these beacons integrate with those specific systems and those specific providers. So now we're going to do a quick demo of the Alertus system so we can give you guys a good understanding of what this system looks and sounds like. Now, what you're seeing in front of you in the screen right now is the Alertus interface, and take note um, that you could activate this system through your current interface. And so whether you're logging into yours or ours, here's a quick idea of, of what this looks like through the Alertus interface. So when you log in, whatever type of emergency you have, let's say it's a full, full site emergency, you go into emergency activation. This is where your pre-scripted uh, messages will be held. You'll select, you know, whatever message um, you think would obviously apply to you and apply to that situation. But you'll click continue, and this will give you a quick breakdown of everything that's included in that alert: the message, the duration. It'll give you an integration and ability to see the recipient. So. Do you have this connected with your SMS system, text, email, social media, and what other integrations do you want for the specific alert? So when you go down to send the alert, this will give you guys a quick idea of what this all looks and it sounds like. guys a quick idea of one how fast the system can activate and two how it integrates with all those different systems um, like we mentioned you know in the demo you can color code your alerts you can set your alerts on timers for minutes hours days and when you send that alert out at any point you can cancel like you know I did for you guys on the call today and then you could follow up as an example with an all clear message and you could color code that with a green, you know, desktop takeover, a green flashing light, a softer alert beacon tone. So, you know, with all these solutions, they're very customizable with how these alerts want to be sent out and certainly how they want to be delivered and what they look like. Okay, well, thanks, Miles. Well, we are now beginning the Q&A session of our presentation. If you have a question, please submit them through the chat or question box. Please note, if we do not get to your question during this session, a representative will reach out to answer your question directly. A recording of this webinar will also be shared with you after today's presentation. So let's begin with our first question. If, what kind of server should we install regarding the alert beacon 
software and, if, and are there any specific requirements? Hi everybody, this is uh, Safe with Alertus. So um, this is generally, it's a web server and uh, Windows Server versions 2008 and above are all supported. Great. All right. Thanks, Steve. So our next question asks, so we are a public facing facility that would need internal areas to be notified so that public areas do not cause panic. Does the alert beacon have the ability to notify select areas within a facility, such as internal locations versus public facing ones? Absolutely, and like uh, some of the things that Miles touched on, um, the alerts are zonable, zonable based on information um, that you configure and information that's reported as part of a, a normal communication between beacon and server. Great, thanks Steve. Our next question asks, what is the typical amount of time to get this system implemented in terms of the time frame? Um, so because there's several aspects um, and solutions available, really it depends on uh, you know what you're looking for for a total solution. Initially, uh, rolling out a server and, and desktop install and some beacons, uh, typical implementation may be a month. It could be a couple months, depending on on resource available, uh, really with the organization. What is the distance that an alert beacon can cover for visible and audio alerts? Yeah, so about 100 feet. You know, each facility is designed a bit differently, um, but I'd say typically about, about 100 feet. Okay, great. All right, our next question asks, can the alert beacon sustain harsh weather conditions such as extreme heat or cold locations? Yeah, so I, I think we had a, uh, a picture about it a little while back. Um, we do have an outdoor uh, weather enclosure for the alert beacons outdoors. Um, we even have um, a hardwired bracket um, indoors. You know, so if you think about like a gymnasium as an example, um, you know, maybe you don't want a ball or something to hit that beacon, so you could do a wire guard on that. For outdoors, um, you know, we work with clients in very cold locations or, or warm or hot locations, and these enclosures will protect them from any, you know, specific weather scenarios. And additionally, um, you know, the, the, the beacon sound might be a little bit infect, affected by the enclosure, but the flashing light and the display of the message um, is very clear with those clear boxes. Okay, great. Thanks, Miles. So our next question asks, we currently have a system that uses PC and Mac users to press control, control keys and where it sends an emergency request. Uh, to, you know, for example, police dispatch. Does the alerts have that capability? Yes, we have that with our uh, uh, desktop activator application. It's supported on both PC and Mac. And uh, this is how we tie in our USB panic buttons. Uh, you can create desktop icons and a menu in the system tray that you can tie up to 10 different alerts or presets that, that each have a, a specific behavior based on your security pro protocols. Great, thanks, Steve. So our next question asks, what type of cabling would be required to hardwire the devices within the system? Um, so depending on distance and uh, bandwidth available, Cat5e for PoE and, and data connection, uh, the panic buttons are uh, connected just with regular like lamp cord, uh, that's a, a peripheral to the beacon. Um, and then like Miles mentioned, we have the AC-DC uh, 12 to 24 volt uh, wall wards. Great, thanks Steve. Our next question asks, is it necessary to use the alert beacon with the text-to-speech modules Is it, or is it more of an optional it's, Any recommendations? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Um, it's it's optional. You know, we have a lot of clients that you know use these beacons to tie into existing speakers, so you can get obviously the the voice spoken message throughout your buildings. 
but they also have the beacons in there as well for the visual aspect. And then we do have some clients that, you know, just have the beacons indoors because the loud sound, the flashing light, and the display of the message gets you the ADA compliance and, you know, covers your buildings effectively. So I would say it's 50-50. It just depends on your organization and your plan. Great. Thanks, Miles. And in addition to that question, um, for the text-to-speech module, is there a female voice option versus a male option? Is it very customizable in that way? It's extremely customizable. We have a, a couple different voices, one male, one female. Um, not only can you configure that, but you can uh, tie in specific tones maybe that are associated with a certain type of alerts. You can play that tone first and then the text-to-speech. You can decide uh, you know, if there's any delay between spoken messages. Um, you can configure a repeat count so it won't, you know, repeat the message more than a certain amount of times. Um, it's fully customizable. Okay, great. Thanks, Dave. So our next question asks, would Alertus be able to partner its own facility alert system with a separate user-based alert system? Or does Alertus come up with a user-based alert system capable of sending text, phone, email alerts to specific groups of individuals? Um, so in some cases, yes, we can use our system to uh, do the user-based notification. Um, what I like to say what Alertus does is uh, instead of targeting specific users or specific groups, we target systems generally, whether it's your fire panel or your desktops or your, um, you know, external personal recipient management notifications like Rave and Everbridge and, and everybody else. And that's why we have an open API and we remain dynamic, um, you know, through development. Great. Thanks, Dave. Our next question asks, can you hook up more than one power source to the beacon, such as DC or PoE, together at the same time? Um, I think... You know, I, I wouldn't recommend it, um, but absolutely you could. Uh, we also include the uh, the battery option, which is nickel metal hydrite, and they're rechargeable, and they'll trickle charge uh, over, you know, a period of time as, as they're receiving external power. So um, if there is a concern with uh, power redundancy or failover, that would be the next option. Okay, great. Thanks, Dave. So our next question asks, it's directed a little more towards panic buttons in relation to the alert system. Is the use of panic buttons, um, are they able to have different location or different functions, excuse me, based on location? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, if you want a button to activate your full system, you have that capability. And then additionally, if you want a button as an internal communication tool, like let's say at a specific location to send that alert to you know, public safety or to dispatch that there's a situation in that area, you can wire it both ways. And we do have the hardwired option. We also have a mobile option uh, for your for your mobile phone. And we even have a, um, a desktop option for your desktop clients and even a, a USB um, option. So, you know, for whatever uh, s solution you want to be set up for, whether it's activating your full system or activating an alert to a group of people, we can really customize this solution for your organization. Great, thanks, Miles. Our next question asks, can I connect Alertus to, or the Alertus alert beacon to an, exist, uh, to, to an existing system such as a large message board? Uh, like digital signage? I'll assume that you're referencing digital signage and uh, again, the question, or excuse me, uh, the answer simply is yes. I mean, because of the open API and the different methods that, um, or different behaviors that can be produced subsequent an alert, um, absolutely we can tie into digital signage and message boards. Okay, great. Thanks, Steve. Our next question asks, are there any special requirements for installation inside uh, secured areas such as correctional facilities of that nature, or is it pretty standard across? Um, generally, it's it's standard. Um, if you guys have certain protocols that, uh, you know, need to be followed or certain standards that, that need to be met, um, again, we'll work with you uh, to provide the best solution that fits. Okay, great. Thanks, Steve. 
Our next question asks, do we purchase the product directly from you or do we do you have a design assistance personnel on staff? Is it all custom made? How does that work? Yeah, so we we design all of our solutions in house and you know if you're interested in buying a product, you'll talk to us directly. Um, we can you can buy the products directly from us or like you mentioned or like the question kind of mentioned, we can help you design a solution for your organization. And an example is that is um, we've done many site surveys for organizations where we actually come in person and we do a walkthrough of your entire organization um, for our professional uh, site survey. And we'll do a breakdown and devise, devise kind of like a plan with you around your budget and your infrastructure on a game plan to you know get you the solutions and coverage that you're looking for. Um, in addition, as far as more of a free tactic, um, you know, if you're interested, uh, you could send us building maps. And we'll work with our um, you know, sales engineers and develop a, a solution to get you the coverage that you're looking for um, indoors with the alert beacon. So you have the approach where you can buy from us directly, you have the approach where we can come on site, and you have the approach where you can send us their building maps. Um, all methods are you know, equally effective. Okay, great. Thanks, Miles. Our next question asks, is the mobile app mainly used by the administrator to utilize the system or can users um, such as you know campus and students um, have the app on their phone and receive an alert on the phone itself that's that's a great question so we have two mobile apps um, we have one mobile app to activate the system so for a couple people that are in charge of activating they can log in and activate their full system through the alertus mobile app so if you're not by a computer, you're probably going to want a real quick way of activating. It's a great way to do it. And then additionally, we have our recipient app. So, you know, for you, I'll give you guys an example. Think of, you know, the contractors and the visitors that are, you know, at your organization and at your facility. Um, as an example, you know, before a contractor would sign an agreement with your organization, part of the agreement could be to download the Alertus recipient app. And now any contractor that you have uh, can receive those push notifications to their phone with that mobile alert. And so the contractors are just one example. You can pass this out to you know, faculty and employees and you know, students and whoever you like to download and receive alerts. And an additional functionality of the recipient app is our mobile app panic button. So you know, let's say you have you know, an employee that's walking around and some type of situation happens and you want them to activate an alert to public safety or dispatch with that in, that information, you have the ability to send that alert. So we have two mobile apps, one for activating the system and one for receiving alerts to either A, activate a, a panic uh, alert or to receive a personal notification. You can really customize your mobile app to do any of the functionalities. Okay, great. Thanks, Miles. We're interested to explore a little bit um, more about how the back end works. Is there an online demo where we can access? Yeah, so uh, Alertus has a knowledge base that you could certainly register for, but my recommendation would be to uh, you know, get in touch with us, uh, send us an inquiry through the website, and we'll do a, uh, a webinar designed directly for your organization. And in addition, um, as far as the specs goes, uh, we'll bring a sales engineer into the, onto that call and you know we can get very technical whether you want just a high level overview or a very you know technical call around uh, this system and the solutions that you're interested in. Okay, great. Thanks, Mario. Our next question asks, can the desktop override in this case that um, tie to computer speakers, other other appliances? Yes. Yeah, so uh, with the desktop Premiere, you can send tones, uh, MP3 or WAV files to the desktop, and then we can also leverage uh, Windows and Mac enunciators to have a spoken message of the text that appears on the screen. Okay, great. Thanks. Our next question asks, and this is back to the app, does the recipient app work with multiple sites? Um, so it, it can. There would just be multiple uh, organizational specific apps created with different codes. And then you can zone those based on uh, your satellite sites. Great. Thanks, Dave. And our final question asks, 
As devil's advocate, for example, is there any advice or insight you have for mitigating improper use of a panic button? Say somebody comes in and actually, you know, pranks or misuses it for some reason. Is there any um, any uh, security or protection that you have against that? Sure. So, you know, with every setup that we have, you want to put these hardwired panic buttons in a protected area. So, you know, if it's a college, as an example, you know, you want to put that behind the public safety or, you know, dispatch desk or, you know, somebody's office that, you know, is con controlled or a locked environment. Um, the hardwired panic button does have a safe cover on it. So, you know, if someone would run back there, it'd, it'd be tough to, you know, flip it and, and press it, you know, without getting caught. So, you know, again, we recommend for the hardwired panic button setups to activate your full system to just make sure to put them in a protected area. Okay, great. Thanks, Miles. We have run out of time for this afternoon's session, so we've concluded our Q&A session for our presentation. Again, if we did not get to your question, we will directly reach out to you with an answer from one of our representatives on our team. If you have any additional questions beyond this presentation or need additional information, uh, please feel free to email marketing at alertus.com and we will be happy to assist. If you're interested in any upcoming webinars um, or regional events, uh, please visit alertus.com forward slash webinars for webinars and alertus.com forward slash events for uh, our regional events to see your full schedule. We thank you today uh, for or thank you today for joining today's webinar and I look forward to meeting you again soon. Thank you everybody.